Hi everyone. I hope you all can hear me and welcome to the very first edition of Facebook live streaming Quantum Healing with Candace. This show is sponsored by in5d.com and I want to give my good friend Greg Prescott a great big thank you for making this show possible. Today's topic is group past life regression past life regression in general, and your questions with my live answers. But before we get started, if you've not ever met me before, my name is Candace Craw Goldman, and I've been doing this past life regression work for just about 10 years now. And I had the distinct honor and pleasure of studying with and actually assisting the late, great, and most beloved Dolores Cannon. I'm the founder and managing director of the original Quantum Healing support forum and we still take care of Dolores' students over there. So thank you all very much for being here um, with me today. And um, so it looks like we've got some people joining up. Can everyone hear me just fine? Um, I think I can see some of the people coming in. There's Kristen and there's Tom Ramsey from uh, my old Bitburg days. Hi Tom. There's Jenna. Hi John. There's Dawn. Hi Dawn. She's a local gal here in Wichita. You know Dawn, one of the reasons I'm doing this show is to prep for uh, group past life regression I'm having here in the Wichita area here in just two days. So if you are in this area and you're interested in coming on down Thursday night and trying this out, um, I'll have links at, at the bottom here at the meetup uh, dot com links I'll put in the comment section below. And there's my cousin Irmi from Germany. Hi Irmi. And there's uh, Bobby uh, Arant and he's a, he's a quantum healing practitioner. And there's Allison Dordry. She's a brand new practitioner. Hi Allison. It's so great that you all are here joining me. Um, you know, this work, this past life regression work is is becoming more and more popular even though it's been it's been out there for a while and there's a lot of different techniques, there's a lot of different teachers, there's a lot of different ways that people can experience their past lives. And today I'm taking your questions and so I'll want you to put them um, in the comment section over there um, so that I can get to them. But I want to talk a little bit first about the whole idea of a group past life regression because it's coming up here in my, um, my own calendar in a couple of days, but also because this idea of a group past life regression was really the very first thing that got me started in this many, many years ago. And I wanted to tell you a little story about it because I think it's significant about how the, the whole thing works and how, how important it actually can be um, along with fun because <laughs> it was for me. So way back when, and I think um, my daughter is here, and I'm going to try to, oh, Lauren, I can't, I cannot pin your comment, sweetheart, because it's gone gray. She's asked me to pin the comment. I'm going to pin uh, in, in a little bit a comment of where you can find the replay of this on our YouTube channel. But before we get to all that technical stuff, I want to talk to you about this group past life regressions experience that I had. And it really was and remains a very significant part of my life. And it happened kind of like this. So I was a mom and I had two little kids about the age that my daughter's children are now. Um, they were, one or both of them were in diapers and I was home all day long being a mom. And I had the opportunity on the weekend to attend a past life regression event. And it was a group past life regression this happened in New Jersey, not far from the town of Edison. Yes, I actually used to live in New Jersey. And my friend called me up, my friend Patty called me up and said, hey, let's go to this group past life regression. And I had no idea what a group past life regression was. The only thing really that I knew is that I could have a little bit of time away from my beautiful <laughs> but very demanding toddlers. And I said, I'm there. And we went to um, kind of an artsy place in town, you know, the candle shops, the book shops, the, the places that we go to have these kinds of sessions even now. And it was winter time and I remember it was very cold and we walked up the stairs. It was a little meeting room above um, a metaphysical bookstore. 
And I was just so happy to be there with my friend and knew something different. And we went upstairs and there was a couple, a very nice couple, who gave a little bit of presentation information about regressions in general, about my, what might happen in a group past life regression, and then led us all in the experience. And there was not too many people, uh, um, too many people there. There was maybe 10 or 12 people there. Um, and we all laid down on the floor. And we were taken into um, a relaxed state and told to imagine being taken someplace. I don't even remember exactly how, but we all individually went into our own little experience. And I want to tell you about mine. So I found myself in, and it was quite short. Um, these group regressions can be quite short, and mine, and this one was back in, I think it was 1993 probably. I found myself in a room, and I was seated at a very low table. There were textiles everywhere, beautiful wall hangings. There were pillows. I was there with my young son and my elderly father, or at least that's what it seemed like to me. But we were sitting on pillows, and we were eating food, and it was a nice full table of food, uh, bowls and patterned cutlery and patterned... Um, pottery and, and scooping sort of maybe Mediterranean or Indian type finger food that you might think of today. And it was very warm in this room and sort of dark, but it wasn't stifling, but it was, uh, it was very warm. And I was looking at this man eat, and the man had a very full beard, and he had a turban on his head, and he was sitting to my left. And he wasn't looking at me, he was just eating. And he was just eating and eating, and this was food that I know that I had prepared for him and a small male child on my right-hand side. And this small male child was maybe two or three, and he was eating like any two or three-year-old would eat, even today, and um, very messily, and I was sort of helping him. And I sat there and I was getting my bearings about what was going on here. And what I realized was that I had a very rich internal landscape of how I was feeling. I, um, I was mad. <laughs> I mean, I was really, really angry. I was basically seething, actually. And as the regressionist was explaining the process about take note of your surroundings, that's what I was doing, and, and the regressionist was saying, how are you feeling, and that's when I was like, well, how was I feeling, and that's when I realized I was mad. So, you know, well, why? Why was I mad? And I was looking at this man who was my father, and I was just thinking how he took his freedom for granted, and that he could go anywhere, and he could talk to anyone, and he could do really anything he wanted uh, within reason in his life. And I was very envious of that, and I was very upset about that, that I couldn't go anywhere, that I was trapped in this place. And then I looked over at my child, and this was a little boy, and I found myself having an internal conversation about being really upset that this small child didn't even know that he was going to have opportunities that I would never have in my life because I was female. And it was a very strange feeling to have because I loved him. I loved my father, too. But I was also very envious of the fact that they were both male, which meant they were both free, uh, or at least free to move around. And I wasn't free at all. And that was so upsetting to me. And then I had another layer of feeling, which was I should be ashamed of myself. I should be absolutely ashamed of myself because uh, I had food in front of me on this table, and I was very, very blessed. And then I looked over, and on the wall there was a window, and I, I knew that people were passing in the streets, even though the window was closed. I knew that people were passing in the streets that would literally kill us or me to have the food that was on the table if they knew it was there, because there were very hungry people in the streets. I have no idea where I was, the place or anything. Um, the, the walls were sort of smooth. It may have been kind of a stucco-y mud kind of uh, building, dirt building, adobe kind of thing. I don't really know. Um, 
and I had this rich internal landscape of all of these different feelings. And I felt young, healthy, and absolutely like my life was over or the opportunities in my life were over. I don't have a memory of a mate or a husband. Um, it, the regression didn't last that long. It was, a, it was a very short time frame where I just had this experience of being a few minutes at this dinner table. And then the regressionist took all of us, 10 of us or however many were there, and brought us back to conscious everyday reality. And I sat up and my friend Patty sat up and uh, I just started laughing because I said, well, you know, that didn't really work. I, I just made that up. I just made that up. I'm, you know, I've got a great imagination, so I didn't really have a past life regression. I didn't really experience anything that was um, real, right? I didn't really go to a past life, but wow, I was congratulating myself at what a great imagination I had. And I asked Patty what experience she had. And it was very interesting, too. She did very much the same thing. She says, well, it didn't really work, but um, I kind of imagined I was in this boat, and I was this uh, Native American person, and I was laying in this boat, and I don't know why I was laying in a boat, you know, kind of a canoe uh, dugout or something. And we laughed the whole way home, and we had a great uh, time, great afternoon, but we didn't believe that we really visited past lives. Well, that was many, many years ago. I mean, how long ago was that? 25, 30 years ago? I mean, almost, right? And, of course, look how significant that was. Um, I did and I do adore my children. But I wanted more from life in the world. And back then there wasn't the Internet. Back then there wasn't a way to engage with the world, really, um, unless you left the house, and I was absolutely and utterly at my house, my condo, or wherever apartment, wherever we were living at the time, um, and I was trapped. And so the event was very significant, and it was very telling. And what I know now, and when I look back on it, what I find very interesting is I can remember the patterns, the patterns of the textiles, the feeling in my stomach, um, uh, the envy, and it informed my life both then and now. So having a even very brief group past life regression can make um, a significant uh, change in your life, or at least have you think about something that you might want to think about further. Also having a group past life regression is a safe, easy, and fun way to try what having a session one-on-one uh, -on -one might be about. So that's what we are doing here at my wellness studio in Augusta in Kansas, that's just outside of Wichita, this coming Thursday, which is the um, 13th of July, uh, 2017. Um, and you can find out information I'll put out on this, or just uh, sign up to my meetup group. So I'm kind of ready to take some questions. So what I'm going to do, and I've not done this before. My good friend Pamela Arlen has done this a lot. And uh, she knows how to scroll through and get questions. This is going to be my very first um, time of looking for questions. And here is wonderful Ronald DeWald, who is a magnificent uh, hypnotherapist and past life regressionist himself. And he is saying, I'm here because I haven't had any past lives. As being born as human on this earth, I've been guided to this earth. No, I've been to this earth many times as a healer and guide. I would like to explore that. That's actually beautiful. Um, and that's, you know, that's very much what Dolores Cannon wrote in her book, um, uh, The Three Waves of Volunteers in the New Earth. So Ron has just talked about the fact that he may be one of those waves, probably a first waiver. Um, thank you so much. Okay, maybe, there we go. Ah, now I'm seeing Lauren's comment. I can see it now, Lauren, so I am pinning Lauren's comment to the top. That is our YouTube channel, and this program and a bunch of other YouTubes that we're uh, um, revamping and, and bringing over, we're going to go to this uh, channel, which is actually pretty new, but we're going to fill it up fast. All right? Okay. Um, there's Susan Worcester. Hi, Susan. So happy to have you here. She says she's never had a past life regression, and some have told me who I supposedly was in other lives. You know, Susan, that's a great comment. Um, there are some people who can absolutely do that. Uh, Pamela Arlen's one of them, 
there are other people who can absolutely intuit, feel, sense, or even get great details about what you might have experienced in a past life. However, having your own personal experience of that is almost always um, a very significant thing because the information comes from you. It's about you anyway. And for the information to come from you rather than from another person, as talented or as accurate as that may be, when the information comes from you, it's quite significant and quite powerful. So I'm going to um, see if there's any other questions here. There's Magda. Hi, Magda Pinto. Sounds like deep shame programming. You are free now, and you are always free inside. Absolutely, Magda. And what I've realized is, oh, goodness, I'm getting the bumps as I'm saying this. You know, there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of patterns that we repeat. There's a lot of people who have to have many life experiences before learning something. And one of the things, of course, that I learned there was exactly uh, that. And I also learned about equality, and I learned about internal peace, and I learned about a lot of different things. I've also actually learned, and this won't surprise anyone who really knows me, um, that uh, I've actually, I'm almost pretty sure I've been male quite a bit more than I've been female. I am very much uh, a female in this life. Uh, I'm very happy to be so. But my internal experience far more has um, been expressed as a male than a female. And I, I think it was my vision to come to this life in this time, the awakening of the divine, divine feminine, to be able to participate in that way at this time on the planet as a female. Um, let's see. So some of you are sharing my video. Thank you so much. I do appreciate that. Um, there's Diane Argebright. Diane's a great uh, one for stories of ET contact. She's my friend down in Austin, Texas. Hi, Diane. Scrolling through, looking for some more questions. Um, there's Barbara Becker. Hi, Barbara Becker. Barbara is one of our greatest practitioners, and she's in Arizona right now. Delighted to have you on with me today, Barbara. Love your energy. Love everything about you. There's my really good friend and local um, local friend, Sarah Lawrence Henson. You know what, Sarah? I have something to say to you. Do you know that the eclipse is coming up, and you and I are getting together on that day, aren't we? What are the odds that we got that figured out that way? Uh, it's going to be a powerful day for us. Uh, let's see, Summer Garner. Hi, Summer. Hope you went to the post office today. Let's see, anyone else got any questions? There may not be any questions left. Let's see. Um, let's see. I'm happy to answer any questions. Well, how about this? How about I just talk about a little bit about why would anyone even want to have a past life regression? There's a lot of different reasons. A lot of people come to have a past life regression because they've got a health issue and they have tried everything and everything traditional and conventional possible that they can think of and they're kind of stuck and they they really don't know what else to do and having a session where you speak to your own consciousness can be very much a reason to have a session another reason a very big reason people have past life regressions is for relationships if you have a pattern in your relationships, either with a spouse, maybe sometimes with your children, sometimes with coworkers, that you keep repeating and repeating, or you have a particular relationship that you are not able to completely understand why you are having difficulty or challenges in that relationship, you may be repeating a pattern that you've repeated throughout lifetimes until you can break that pattern or understand the reasons for for it happening. Another great big reason people have regressions are life path issues. People, some people aren't real happy with their jobs or they're not real happy with where they live, etc. Some people will come um, have a session to explore their consciousness about what's important in those areas of their life. Should they take schooling and move into another career? Are they find where they are, but they just need a hobby. And sometimes the answers will surprise you. A lot of people have some, some pretty good ideas of what the answers are anyway, and they come for affirmations, and they come for confirmation. 
But um, some people's answers are great big fat surprises, and those of us who know this work know that that's true, and it keeps me on my toes, and it keeps this work so interesting. Another reason people will have sessions is mysteries or lost time. Why can't I remember my childhood? What happened that night in the woods? And a lot of star seeds and ET contact -y people will come and want sessions. And now I will tell you this because this is very interesting for those skeptics out there. Some people who come and say, I want to know who my star family is. I want to know about the spaceships that have been picking me up at night. Um, some of those people find out that those dreams they've been having aren't dreams and that they're real. But some of them find out that it's just dreams and they just love Star Trek and Star Wars and their heart is in the stars and they're explorers and they have cosmic family, etc. but that they're just dreams. So it's not always what you think it might be, right? Um, some people have had mysteries like lost objects or lost family members, the information has come through. Another reason people have uh, past life regressions or regression sessions uh, of any kind is to find out their cosmic family, their origins. Maybe they've always had an idea that they've traveled through the stars or that the Pleiades you know, mean so much to them. For me, example, I've looked at the o Orion constellation since I was very small, the belt of Orion, the middle star of Orion in particular, and I know my good friend Michelle Walling and many of you out there um, know what that feels like and having a session like this you can find out some information like that. I actually myself had a, a QHHT session where I met a currently living aspect of myself who's living on Orion right now or in the Orion system. A very big burly man in a very physical 3D realm and in that regression session he talked to me and I talked to him and that was astounding. Uh, he would go sit on a cliff and think about me, and I would walk through the prairie and think about him. And, and this is what we're talking about when you hear people throw out the word multidimensional. We are multidimensional beings. So an aspect of myself is having that story streamline, and an aspect of me having this story streamline is just now becoming aware and vice versa. And that's what's so exciting about this kind of work. One of the questions um, that's up there is how do you prepare for a group past life regression? Well, hey, just listening to uh, a program like this or doing some reading or really nothing, really nothing at all. There's really nothing you need to do to prepare. There's really, you can prepare for both a group session, a very lightweight session. You can prepare for a one-on-one -on -one session, but there's no real need to prepare. Um, the biggest need is to trust yourself and be comfortable with whoever you're doing this with. That's the most important thing. Everything else will come naturally. Can you do some things? You bet. Can you do some things that might make it better, easier, go smoother? Sure, you can, but it's not really required. The most interesting, um, excuse me, the most important thing is that you have a sense of excitement, anticipation, and that you really want to do it, and an open possibility. Um, an open mind about what could happen, and um, yeah, trust in yourself and in your practitioner, but mostly in yourself. Let's see, I'm going to see uh, if there's any more questions. We've been going on um, not quite half an hour. We've got a few more minutes, so I'm scrolling through, scrolling through. Um, here's a question from Barbara Becker. What age range do, do I see? In my regular one-on-one -on -one sessions, that's a really great question. Um, for a long, long time, it was the older crowd that was into this stuff. But lately, there are some very, very 20-something kind of people who are very awake or waking up quickly who uh, are interested in exploring um, their consciousness and, and their life. But really all ages, really all ages. As a matter of fact, and Lauren, you may not, I know my daughter's listening to this, um, you may not know this, but you, uh, you have the record of being the youngest person I've ever regressed. And that was, that was way back, probably, I'd probably been doing the work for maybe not quite a year, um, and Lauren was still in high school. And I had a pretty significant session. Um, 
a pretty significant session, and I think it informed her life. Uh, someday, maybe she'll share a little bit more about how um, how it affected her life. And let's see, there's another question. Oh, here's one from Tracy Reed. How can you know if the thoughts are just made up? Well, it's a great question, and it's one that almost everybody asks themselves. And let me tell you what, guess who else asks this, even if I were to lay down and have a, a session right now? Me. <laughs> yeah. I, I do the same thing just like everybody. My conscious mind, my ego self, my, my everyday consciousness that's been trained from very early childhood to not believe in these extra ways of uh, knowledge, understanding, and information starts throwing up all kinds of um, arguments about how you are just making this up. So how do you know if you're fabricating it? How do you know if it's real? How, how do you know? Dolores would answer this way, and I sat in many classes with her, and she would answer the question this way all the time. She would say, well, you're making it up from somewhere. And what she meant and how she would talk about finishing that sentence is she would say, your higher self, your larger part of you, your, your higher self, your super consciousness, she, she called it the subconscious, would provide storylines for you to learn from. Are they past lives? Does it matter? If it's helpful and it's informative to you, does it matter? Most of us who have this idea of making it up and then dismissing it because it's fabricated are replaying our programming, our early programming. Um, you know, you do not have an imaginary friend. Um, be logical. Get your head out of the clouds. Stop. Um, you, you're just imagining that. That was only a dream. That's only a coincidence. All of those things we do to belittle magic in our world. Well, it worked, didn't it? and it still works. Um, you know, I'm going to be 57 next month, and I still have my own programming to contend with when I explore my own consciousness. But I'm aware of that programming, and I can kind of talk to it. So what I say in my own head is, yeah, yeah, I know that there's this part of me that's trying to keep me safe, right? That's saying, you're just making this up. And I just pat that little part of me on the head and say, that's okay, but we're just going to go do this right now. And then afterwards, when you review your experience, you can determine then whether or not uh, you want to give it any validity, right? So um, anyway, okay. So let's see if there's some more questions here. Um, let's see. Uh, Susan Worcester says, that's interesting in regards to having information coming from you. I didn't realize there was a difference. Oh, absolutely there's a difference. I guess that's what Dolores Cannon did and what you do and other people do to allow someone to speak about their own past lives. Absolutely. It makes a lot of difference if your own voice informs you about your world, your life, and your consciousness. But then again, back to that programming, we've sort of been programmed not to trust ourselves. So, you know, it's getting through some of that programming. Um, here we go. Here's Vanessa Watson. Hi, Vanessa. She says, are you saying... The glimpses of lifetimes you get relate to issues we need to heal. Absolutely. Absolutely. But sometimes not just we need to heal. Maybe we need to learn from. You know that big burly guy <laughs> on Orion? That guy gives me strength. He's a warrior in Orion. And uh, I have to access my inner warrior on some levels during my everyday life here as this little female human being. And uh, I'm really happy he's there. He's got my back, you know, or my consciousness back anyway. So maybe it's aspects of yourself that you need to incorporate in yourself, right? Um, Barbara says she's facilitating a QHHT session this afternoon. She's so excited. Yes, you know, that work, Dolores Cannon's work is expanding and growing and becoming so amazing. Um, you know, it, it, we're about half an hour into this work, but I want to tell you, I'm, get, I'm, I'm finishing up an article for our practitioner blog, and our practitioner website is quantumhealingpractitioners.com. There's actually a blog there, uh, a blog tab, and one of the blogs that I'm getting ready to put up 
is from one of our uh, practitioners who um, did a session not very many days ago. And what, what came through was it was a mother with an adopted son. And the adopted son's consciousness basically came up in the session. And that practitioner took that consciousness of the son, not the mother, not the being who was laying there but took that consciousness of the son who really needed information and really needed healing. And so it was a regression within a regression. And there was healing then again for him and his mother. And that story is coming right up on uh, quantumhealingpractitioners.com. And uh, so stay tuned for that. Hey, listen, we've been going for about half an hour now, and I'm going to take just a couple more questions if I can see any. Um, Dawn asks, have you had any clients start to astral travel during their sessions? Well, yes. Some would say that's exactly what you're doing when you are having a regression. You're either astrally traveling or you are accessing the Akashic Records. It's your conscious. Another way of talking about it is remote viewing. You know, we as humans use these labels to help explain what's going on, but it's really consciousness exploration and we use these words these labels but sometimes the words get us into trouble if we communicated and we're moving in that way if we communicated just energetically astral travel akashic records those kinds of things it, it, those labels those things would all kind of blend and meld and they're doing that anyway and some of what i see anyway in our spiritual communities is sometimes i see a lot of bickering about words and labels about what's going on and it really um we're moving out of that you know we're moving into different paradigms we're moving where our heart is feeling the information and our beingness is feeling the information and where um, the story is being projected without words energetically and that's another way we are expanding and ascending as humans okay um let's see um let's see should, okay, Phoebe Brown. Hi, Phoebe. Phoebe asks, should a session be done with someone diagnosed bipolar who is on many, many medications? Many, many, many clients are bipolar or diagnosed bipolar, so not a problem. The one, the one category of medications and diagnoses that gives us some concern, uh, and Dolores taught us this, was those who have dissociative um, diagnoses, multiple personality diagnoses, or schizophrenia. Those people are probably not best served by this kind of consciousness exploration. However, I have to say this because I have a great story. I can tell stories all day long. I saw a woman in Austin, Texas who called me up and she said, I've been wanting to have a past life regression, but no one would have me as a client because I've been diagnosed as schizophrenic. And I'm having this conversation with her just on the telephone. And I said, well, tell me a little bit about that. And she told me she'd been committed. She'd had electroshock treatments. This diagnosis had been following her for something like 25 years. And I said, okay, well, so in that 25 years time, what's your life been like? Oh, pretty stable. Um, she's married. Um, married to the same man. She had the same job that whole time. Uh, she's a, had a lot of dreams. Well, why, how did this all happen? She says, well, she had visitation from angelic presences. Told her husband, told her doctor, they committed her. She started getting electroshock treatments. I'm no doctor, but in my book, that doesn't fit the profile of someone who has a severe or a schizophrenic kind of life. Schizophrenic people tend to not be able to hold down jobs. They tend to be sometimes erratic and um, have a lot of problems with their relations. This woman was stable, she'd been married, she raised children, she had a job for the same job that whole entire time. In my book, it was a misdiagnosis. Again, I'm no psychiatrist, I'm no medical doctor, but I'm talking to her and I'm like, you just come on over, uh, we'll do a session. Um, we'll talk more and if after a lengthy interview, if I think that um, you are served, we can do a session and if not, we'll just call it even. 
and she had the most beautiful session and she was able to communicate with these beautiful beautiful angelic beings that had been and had been trying to communicate with her for decades but people um, were afraid of that and our systems were afraid of that the religious the conventionality you, know, you can't hear voices without being schizophrenic um, not so this woman um, was so blessedly amazingly uh, loving and gifted and touched and was and left very content with the stability of her own mind believing that she can in fact communicate with other realms as we all can if we desire to or quiet our minds enough or give it uh, ourselves an opportunity to do that okay um, I'm really really so happy that so many of you have have joined us um, joined me today um, let's see I'm gonna take one more question okay this is really really a great question so Lois Marie Ward I love your question can someone do this on their own absolutely you don't need me you don't need anybody um, but we can make it easier <laughs> okay or can it happen spontaneously yes so you can do this on you can go on YouTube right now and find yourself a past life regression meditation go find a quiet place lay down and have yourself an experience you can do that however a few things kind of happen uh, sometimes doubt sets in it's hard to keep track of what's going on uh, you might fall asleep those things happen but can you do this by yourself absolutely this is you and your consciousness um, people like us we're just facilitators we just you know we're like tour guides and uh, we've done it before we have some markers we have some tips and hints we can help you and we love helping you and that's why we do this so yeah you can absolutely do this on your own and and it's such a great two-part question especially to end on can it happen spontaneously absolutely okay you have to tell a quick story here at the end but that's my favorite thing to do I think I was about 15 and I had a past life memory spontaneously happen to me and I discounted it for many many years or I didn't know what it was I, di I didn't know what to call it so here's the story very quickly in a nutshell I've, I'm writing about this in more depth I was riding my horse east of Wichita um, if, if those of you who are local want to know where this is um, Harry and 127th Street there used to be something called a gun club just south of that corner south of that intersection southeast of that intersection there's now a huge housing development there called I don't even know it's some sort of horse housing development and um, lots and lots of houses and I used to go behind this gun club and there were beautiful patches of uh, tall grass prairie there where the grasses in the summer would grow 8, 10, 12 feet high, the most beautiful grasses. There would be places I could ride my horse to while sitting on the back of my horse, the grass would be taller than both of our heads. This was a magical place. And there was a place behind this gun club where I could go, and I, it was this little knoll, and I could go to a place and I could turn 360 degrees in this piece of wild prairie and only see grass. I saw no power lines, no houses, no roads. And if no airplanes were going over or, um, or something like that, or a tractor nearby, I used to go to this one place and imagine what it was like to be on these planes 100, 200, 300 years ago, 1,000 years ago. I used to go there and I used to let my imagination go. You see where we're going with this? Your imagination, right? It's the launching point. So I would go to this place and the wind would blow and the grasses would dance like this. And I would sit on my horse's back and dream or daydream a daydream one day when I was doing that boom all of a sudden I had this absolute it was like a memory and uh, I became another person and I almost felt like I slipped off my horse and I was standing on the ground next to the neck of my horse and when I looked up and this all happened in a very short period of time like 30 seconds right this is a very very brief time but it was so significant so I'm standing there on the ground 
um, in the neck of a horse, but I'm not me. Uh, I, I don't have light skin, I don't have blonde hair, and my horse isn't a beautiful sorrel horse with, she had flaxen mane, she was so beautiful. Uh, it was a much different colored horse, and I had brown skin and brown hair, but I was a young girl about the same age, and I was breathless. Um, I was nervous, and I was doing something. And what was I doing? I was braiding uh, my ho uh, a little braid in my horse's mane. And what I was braiding in her mane was a feather from an eagle. And it was, and I was hiding it underneath, um, in, in the mane of, of this horse. And the whole story came to me in an instant, which was the tribe was out, the tribe was hunting, I took this horse, I took this horse to ride, I could get so in trouble, I could like practically be killed for what I was going to do. But I was this girl and I wasn't allowed to ride, do you see the pattern here? I wasn't allowed to ride the horse because that's, you know, that wasn't for me. Not this horse, anyway, and I wanted to know if I took that eagle feather and braided it in that horse's mane, if we could run, if we could run fast, if we could take the energy of an eagle and run even faster with that energy. And my breathlessness was the nerves uh, of, um, of the situation, that I was doing something completely against tribal law, completely against um, the role that I was supposed to have. Even being around the horses, I, they like let me do that. They like let me feed them or take care of them. But I should have been out, you know, beating some moccasins. <laughs> and I wasn't supposed to be messing with the horses and I was gonna do it anyway because I was. And uh, that's uh, something else you find out about your personality. Anyway, it happened in an instant. It happened spontaneously. But since then, that spontaneous um, memory has informed my life and I've never ever forgotten it and still have horses and still think about that all the time and uh, thank you for that question you know gosh we've been doing this now almost for 45 minutes I'm going to have to run but um, I want to remind you all that uh, you can find the replay of this. We'll, we'll put it in the comments section. I want to thank you so much for being here. There's so many great people who, who showed up today and, um, and participated, and I want to thank you so very, very much for that. Hi, Don Parkinson, another good friend. Thank you for being here. Let us know how you found us. You know, Did you uh, find this on my personal page, on the business page? Maybe you're watching this um, you know, after the fact. I'm happy to and will go through and make sure I've answered all of your questions later if I didn't answer them now. And I want to thank you all again so much for joining me today. You know what? A week from today, guess who's going to be on this show? That's the fantastic and wildly YouTube popular Al Weinman is going to join me a week from today. And we're going to set that up a little bit differently. We're going to uh, use Zoom as a show feature there. I will be promoting that. But I'm going to, uh, during that show, I'm going to be able to use this feature that Zoom is now providing for uh, its uh, webinar uh, hosts, which is live streaming on Facebook. So one week from today, Alba Weinman. And I want to thank again Greg Prescott and N5D so much for this platform and this opportunity to speak to you all in the world. I also want to thank Michelle Walling. Michelle Walling and I are putting together a fabulous um, event for the public and for practitioners uh, who uh, practice Dolores's method, but for the public too, who love the whole idea of consciousness exploration, we're going to have a lot of QHHT people show up, Sarasota, Florida, October 6th and 7th. Michelle Walling and I are putting together this event, but other people are going to be there as well. Heather Alache and our higher self information and connection. We're going to have Andrew Martin. We're going to have Katya Turner. Sian Chua is coming all the way from Australia to talk with us. Um, we're going to have singing bowls. We're going to do a group regression there. We're going to do some uh, sound healing. We're going to do um, some drumming on uh, Siesta Key Beach. There's going to be quite a thing happen um, energetically the 6th and 7th of October. I hope you all consider joining us. We'll put those in the link as well. Thank you so much for being here, everyone. Have a really great day. See you next time.
Love you. Bye-bye.